So, what's in the bag? DHL. I know what's in here. Stick around, find out what's in it. It's PCB way. Okay. That's exactly what I was expecting. So this is part of my project, which I've been building. You would have seen some videos on my ESP32 modules and my Polaris interface unit, Laura to Wi-Fi gateway and that sort of stuff. That's projects which I've built. This is a continuation of that. So let's just get into it. It's got delayed a little bit because of China holidays. You know, they had their New Year holiday, which is Chinese New Year, I think it is. And they had that. And then obviously they had the other issues going on over there, which meant they took another week's holiday. So it took extra time off. So it got delayed a little bit, but I ordered these two weeks ago and they're, and they're here now, so I think that's fine for what's going on. So we have a couple more stickers and another PCB way pin. I've got these things all over the place now. So we have two different bolts here. I've got 20 of this one and 10 of this one. There might be a few more. Sometimes I give extras to get in here. So I did show you these bolts, well, a previous revision of these bolts. And previously, I might build them, but I've had to modify a design in order to fit the case which I've got. So I need to get this board out and get one of these boards out and see if they look about right in case they don't fit. Get one of those. Okay, so let's get a case. So this is the one which I showed you before. I think I showed you the whole thing anyway. This is the actual complete interface. And in here is a keyboard, which is obviously that keypad there, and a control module, which is inside this big box. Now I'm changing this box here to be this box here. I was going to use this kind of case because it's a nice sloping case. I was going to use this originally as my design and then I realized it's going to be far easier to just put the circuit board on top and make a 3D printed housing on the top. And it looks a bit ugly though. It doesn't look very professional. It's okay as a prototype and you know testing the system out but I'm happy with that. So it's going into this instead. And fortunately because I didn't have these boxes originally the original ball designs I did were based on this box because that's what I was going to use and they're too big so I've had to rescale them a little bit and hopefully those will fit in this box let's see if I've got the measurements right this keypad section should drop on there and will hopefully line up with screw holes it appears to basically line up that's good first step complete you may notice as well if you I don't remember the previous prototype I did I had a larger header in here and eventually I didn't need that many pins I just allowed for using all, all of the LEDs on the buttons and I'm not using all the LEDs I'm only using this one the LED on that button there it's the only one I'm using and I thought well I now I've made the, the buttons closer together as well compared to the original prototype over here I couldn't actually fit that big header anyway so I actually shrunk it down to only have on it what I actually need and no more if I need to wire up LEDs I could always go straight, you know, wire links straight across the bottom wires, you know, if I need to do that. Yep, and hopefully these spacings will actually match the cutout in there. Yes, it does. There should be, see that's slightly smaller than that cutout. At least in that direction. In that direction, it should also be pretty close. It should just fit inside that cutout. At least that's the plan, right? Um, I'm probably going to put a face over it on here as well, like a 3D printed face. Same as I did with this one here. You can see I've got the 3D printing with all the, all the wording on it. I can actually do this with change filaments halfway through and show how the, the text is orange or something like that, you know, some colour which stands out. That's what I'm planning on doing anyway, but you'll see, we'll see how this goes first. So that's going to fit okay, that's great, there's a keyboard part. Then we have this interface part, which I've shrunk down quite a bit. It was basically the same size as this board, so you can see how much I've got it down by. It didn't need to be that big, I was just using the space out of available for just make it easy. And uh, yeah, I didn't actually need to do it. I've rejigged it all and it goes that way up. And it should line up with those holes as well. And it does. Just, yep, yeah, that's pretty much right. It's very slightly off, maybe a quarter millimeter. Maybe just on one side, it's very slightly offset here. But that'll be fine. I'm not worried about that at all. That's okay. That's easy enough. So I'm happy with that. The boards will physically fit where they're supposed to go. Now, the idea here is that on the front of this board, is I have the display module and the perspex layer in there as well. And basically all the electronics will be on the back of it, as same as the other board. Now I've really changed, obviously I've changed the layout a little bit to make it more compressed. I moved the socket over here, which was a bit of a pain before where I had it. I didn't think about it very well. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to lay the board out inside the case, that sort of stuff. So it wasn't as good as it should have been. I've also moved the buzzer over here. I've decided I know which buzzer I'm going to be using. I know what size it is, because before I had two footprints over here, I didn't know what size I was going to need. And now I know what size it is. I've used that footprint 
and that's the one I've used for this over here. So yeah, so I've got the LoRa networking stuff over here. Voltage regulator, you see I've changed the design as well. I did have that big buck regulator in there, that larger one with the adjustable output on it. I'm not going to use that now, I'm going to use, well, I've got it marked 7 out of 5, I'm going to be using a small buck regulator instead. This is a fixed value one, which I've tested and uses very little power, very good coincident current. I've done a little video on that, showing comparison between the two different modules. Um, and I tested them out, it should be fine, it should be able to handle the current this thing can do plus we've got some big capacitors on here too, well I've got some capacitors around the place which will help buffer it a little bit as well so if it's got any current surges from the wireless networking going off the capacitors should at least help to buffer that a little bit and smooth it out so that's the theory anyway and obviously ESP32 is going to be mounted here, I've made the light bulb longer so it actually completely encompasses the footprint before it is off this side and I've also got an SD card footprint up here, I'm going to run it off a header and I'm going to run a flex uh, ribbon cable down and mount that in the bottom of the case or something like that. I'm not going to... For, originally I was going to try and mount it on this ball and that's what I did in the original design and I decided to go away from that. It's also a different footprint, like the when I did the original one, I don't remember, the actual socket was really hard to get in there, it bent a bit of pin sideways, it didn't actually line up quite right. The footprint wasn't quite right for the parts I've got. I found another footprint which looks almost identical but it's got bigger holes. And the layout might be slightly different too. I don't have them laying around here somewhere. I think I put them away now. Yeah, put them away. I, did, I, had, I had the parts here yesterday. I had the sockets here yesterday. Anyway, I've, I was cleaning up. I'll probably never find them again now. Anyway, so this is a different footprint, so hopefully that'll be a bit better as well. I've simplified it a little bit as well. I've also done a change, well, another change. Well, what else have got here? I've got a resistor divider here. You can see I've got a resistor divider here. So that is actually measuring the voltage from the batteries. Okay, so it's dividing it down. Um, by a third and that's given me the voltage reading on the ESP32 so then I can see what the battery voltage is I can actually then program in software a battery monitoring thing so if the battery starts getting a bit low you can send me a message or something like that because it's going to a website so I can actually you know, get it so it sets a flag to say what the battery voltage is or something like, something like that I haven't figured that part exactly out yet but I might just display it on screen and just keep it simple but the idea there is I can actually at least check the battery, the battery voltage and see how it's handling the loading because this is going to be on all day for two days so sort of two probably two lots of ten hours at least so we'll see how we go I mean also the case may allow me to put four batteries in here I mean here's a pack of four right. um, I can obviously four battery holders I may be able to fit that in I'm not sure yet I've got some other stuff to stuff in there as well um, the more batteries I can shove in there the better also I need to put BMS modules in there as well, but these are going to be a set of 8 volts. So it's not doing too much stress on the voltage regulator and stuff on here. So it's going to be 8 volts down to 5 volts, so it's not too big a drop. I'm not going to be doing 16 volts into it for example. That's the plan. It's going to be interesting building this thing. So as I sort of kind of touched upon at the very beginning, these balls are provided to me at no cost by PCBWay. These are free of charge for promotion, obviously sponsorship thing. So thank you much PCBWay for these balls and um, for looking after me even though times are a bit busy over there right now and I know people are complaining about delays with their orders and stuff like that but for not just PCB way but other companies as well um, because purely that's the nature of it they're still trying to catch up after their holidays and then they're also short staffed as well because they're being cautious about things no, just accept it it's going to take a bit longer you know yeah anyway but have some patience I just having a quick look at the boards to make sure I've made any mistakes because it's always possible I've screwed something up. <laughs> and I thought, well, yeah, I've had a good look at the Gerbers and stuff like that, but you never quite know when you see it in the flesh, you know, as it were. Sometimes you think, oh no, that's not right. But <laughs> it happens. I don't see anything that jumps at me right now, at least it's looking good. But hopefully I haven't made any mistakes. I was quite thorough in my checking. This is the main one I'm worried about because I've made so many changes on this particular ball. Hopefully I haven't messed anything up on this one. I'll show you a closer because I'll come back. Alright, one well, of the first things I've got to do is this display module here. I've shown this before in another video. I'm not going to repeat it. I'm going to just, just tell you what I've got to do. This module here needs to be converted from SPI to I squared C. So I need to do that first. I wasn't going to forget. And once that's done, that will go on here on that side and ground pinch like that and it should be centered that looks about right that is kind of centered overall and that's exactly what I want so that's got piggyback on that board in here like this 
So I've got to put these service mount parts on here as well. I've got some. I've got a transistor here, a few uh, resistors, capacitors, that kind of thing, and that is going to sit on there. Now, obviously, you've got these metal brackets and stuff on here. On what I've got to do, I'll put some foam on here, so it'll stand off very slightly. You know, some kind of protection barrier so it doesn't bite through and short out the board underneath. This has also got a mount inside the case. Let's show you what I mean. So the display is also going to go in here, sort of sit in there, kind of. It's also going to have a bit of a gap each side, but you know, so be it. And that board then goes over the top. So there is, even like that, is a small gap, not much, just like a fraction of a millimetre. But I've also got to get perspex in there yet in order to protect it, so it's pretty much splash proof. I've got my aim for splash proof. I'll see if I can get it not that good, but. So I was fully expecting to put these on little standoffs and put spaces in there and stand off a little bit. So I'm not too worried about it at all. I mean, even if I put these headers in here, I'm only going to be using four pins actually, so let's break that off. There's only five or seven of those. Let's cut off three of those, don't need them. And this might be enough for space anyway. It might not matter. Oh, other side. That side of the wall. I know I'm going to confuse myself with this. It's the orientation. So that will go on there. So that, that header is standing off a little bit there. Even this, that header is actually creating a, a big enough gap. Right? So maybe I should see if I can stand off the header on the other side as well. Anyway, I'll figure that part out. I'm not too worried about that bit of that gap. I mean, it can be bigger. I mean, I could make it, you know, 5mm even probably be fine. You know, use the header right at the very tip there or something like that. Because I've got space inside the case to have that standing down a little bit below the surface. There's a big enough gap inside here to actually allow me to stand that down. But I don't want to waste space in the case, obviously, either. You know, I want it to only use as much space as I need to. But that's the same I need to consider is that way it sits on that board to make sure it's not shorting anything out. Okay, it's just something I've got to think about. I knew I was going to have to do that, I just thought i will figure that out when I get to it. Do the modification I need to do on this board first, get it converted over to uh, I squared C from SPI, then I can carry on, otherwise I'll forget forget about it and then I can start populating this thing, which I will record. And sorry about all the air conditioning noise, it's, it's really hot right now. It's like 27 degrees and that's with the aircon turned on. The air conditioning's not very good, I'm afraid, it's a bit noisy. If I had enough money I'd actually replace it. I was hoping to replace it this year, but um, I couldn't afford it, I had too much other stuff going on. Mainly this project I'm working on. It's been costing a bit of money to buy the bits and pieces I need to do. Never mind. Maybe next year. <laughs> right, that's the display converted. Now I can move on to doing the actual PCB. Right, so I need some 100 nanofarad, I'm going to say 100 nanofarad capacitors, which is what these are. And there are a few of those. I need, I think, one on this side of the board and a few on the other side. One there. I've got one that goes there. I've got some 68s that go on this side as well. And I'll need one, two, might be it, two this side. Yep, I, I don't remember what I did for the design now, so, you know. Yeah, so we've got two from this side as well. Right, I'll just change my camera angle slightly, see if I can get a better shot of what I'm doing here. So those are the 100s that go there, we'll shove those on. I'll, then I'll turn it on, turn it over to the other side. I'm going to use hot air for this. So I've already got an extractor fan running, I've got my air conditioning running, and I'm going to have hot air station running. Sorry about the noise, there's nothing I can do. It's just the way it is. Um, actually, I'm going to need to put some solder on this first because that's going to be really helpful. I'm going to use hot air to put these on. I think it might just be easier. And hopefully, I don't get too much in the way. I'll blow everything away. Hold on. Let's turn this air down a bit. I don't need that much heat. Of course, stuff for using MacBooks. <laughs> They're much lower air. So I'm using 0603 parts, let's go this way shall I? Yeah, 0603s. Right. Might have enough solder on that side. Okay. Yeah, I know it wasn't great camera work. Sorry about that. Okay, so it's two on. It's the other side. So I really saw about all the noise, there's nothing I can do about it. It's just too damn hot to not have the air conditioning running. Right, let's solder on there. And we're going to float. Yep, that's on. 
Look all right. Maybe. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think it'll do. That looks a bit blobby actually, doesn't it? Okay, camera work is a bit sucky today. Anyway, that's three, three capacitors on. Alright, so now I need a transistor. I also got some resistors to put on, but I'll do the transistor first. I need a 2 in 3904 or a KST304, whatever you want to call it. I've got a bunch of those, let's get one of those out. Now I'll do the same thing there, we'll just. Cheap flaps, decent solder, or well, decent ish solder. Let's get these pads tend a bit better. So I know you can't see that very well, can you? Alright, flip this over. Now, last time I did use a 2 and 3904 this is a slightly different chip, well, slightly different part. It's an equivalent part, so it should work. Um, if it doesn't work, it could be a pain getting to it because I'm going to have the display soldered on. So, uh, let's just get a bit of a shot of the camera. Eh? There you go, so what I want to put on is that part right there. Let's see what we can do, so blowing it away. Put some different flux on. It's a bit, bit more fussy about this. Let's hit it again. It's currently not quite lined up. And I'm in the way, of course. Okay, it's done. That's much nicer. That's all on there. And I did actually have another transistor, think about it. I had two on here. Yeah, I've got two. Other one over here as well. Could do it again. I'll come back after that. Let's get it in place. I've already put some solder on the pads. Let's get it kind of down, then I'll float it, hopefully. There you go, it looks like it's done. So these capacitor values I'm putting on aren't very critical because they're just my estimates about what it might need in order to reduce the possibilities of noise. So I'm using 100 nanofarad which is quite a common value and 68 nanofarad so it's got some different frequency response characteristics. Okay so let's get these ones on. So this is 68 here, I'm going to put one up here and, and one down here. Now I missed the 100 nanofarad which I've already put on when I wasn't recording. I saw that sitting and I thought, oh yeah, better put it in place. So I've already put these with some solder on there and stuff like that, so get that in place like that. Push it down. Okay, next one. This might need some flux on this one, it's looking a bit bubbly. It should all have flux on really anyway. Put some of this stuff on. And that on there, and on there. This gives them a better joint. I'll reduce my airflow as well, so I shouldn't blow anything away. There we go, that looks nicer. Okay, so that's those on. Now I've got to do resistors, I think. I don't think any more capacitors left on there. Better double check, I suppose. Probably missed them once. I've got some electrolytics, so I won't worry about those until after. Yeah, just resistors to do now. So I'm going to do 1.5k resistor right here. So I've already put some solder on there and some fresh flux. I'll drop a resistor in there. And I suppose it drops it down. I don't know. Right. Now 
one. Do you know one? Okay. That's those two done. I won't clean the board up until afterwards. A little bit lacking in solder. Let's give it a bit of a touch up with some silver solder. Yeah, let us move. Let's not stuff down very well. That's what I thought. Let's just double check this one. This one looks alright. Yeah, that's fine. So let's just uh, hit that hot air again. I'm just cutting shadows in the ball when I'm trying to work on it. Yeah. Good now. Right, that's those two resistors. Now I need what? What do I need next? So I've got 33s, got two 33 k's just here, and I've got these divider resistors over here. So I'll get the two 33 k's next. Right, camera's going to be kind of focused in the right place, so let's do it. Put some fresh flux on there, try and get out of the shadows. That one, and the other one. There we go, it popped into place. That's those two. So after consulting my resistor book here, I don't actually have a 250k resistor. I've got a 240k. I should have checked this before. I do have a 510 though, so I'm going to substitute a 240 instead of a 250k there. So just here. Those two resistors here I'm talking about. So the question is, can I do both resistors at once without one blowing away? Right next to each other, so it's going to be close. So I might be able to do them both at once. Let's give it a go, shall we? So that's the 240k, and this one here, which is naturally upside down, is the 510. Right, let's get some higher in this thing. What happens? Apart from washing away with the flux. Right. No, I'm going to hold it. It's not going to work. Okay, the other one. I'm actually doing this a bit sideways, a bit awkward. Spin it around. Okay. Done. And done. So is that all the surface mount parts? I believe it is. So I was debating about whether I use these female headers or not because it means they stand off the ball by quite a bit when you're using the female header. You know, it adds that much more height onto it because I'm obviously trying to keep it quite compact as well. However, the trade-off then is if I don't use headers, I'll be soldering it straight onto the ball, which may not be an issue. But if this unit ever fails, it means I can't just unplug it and plug a new one in and carry on. Um, I would have to desolder the thing and that's going to be a pain, you know, with all these pins, trying to get that desoldered would be a bit of a mission, especially double-sided board like this. So I'm inclined, especially as well if I've got a programming problem, sometimes it's going to be funny about getting programmed. So you can push a boot button on them and it won't program on one of my other units. Um, I'm going to need to try and figure out what it is that causes it, but... I actually have to take it off the ball before it will let me program it. So I'm worried about this design, maybe that would be an issue with this as well. So I'm, I think I will use headers, even though I prefer not to. There's benefits and, and you know to using headers, but there's also benefits to not using headers. So I think on this one, as it is like a, a prototype as well, I suppose, I will use headers on it and 
we'll see how it goes. If it programs just fine without any issues, then I may, on the next one I build, not have the headers on it and take that risk of it failing one day and needing to be desoldered. I mean, nothing lasts forever, they will fail eventually, and I'd like to keep it nice and easy to fix, but um, I suppose I could always swap the whole board out. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, we'll get these headers lined up, cut down the size and lined up, and we'll put those in. So a trick to getting these headers in there nice and straight and lined up is to actually put them on the board first, on the module first, and then drop onto the board, and then solder them in. And then you def they definitely line up with everything. That way you can't get it wrong. It's just far easier that way. So I'm not going to, uh, I suppose I might record some of it. Let's get some done. We'll do a bit. It's, um, I won't use this flux, I'll use the pin flux. Let's just do some here like this. Now I've also got optional header, expander headers on here, these extra rows. I'm not going to populate those at this time. I don't need them. But um, if I do need to expand it or change anything later on, I can just plug a stick another header row on there and tap it off and change it to what I need to do. So I'm just sort of future proofing there a little bit. That's the thing anyway. Alright, let's get soldering. I've already got that flux on there obviously, let's tip it down. This whole thing's wanting to tip up so a bit of a pain. I think my iron's turned off, yes it is. Left it sitting too long. It's fine. There we go. Don't take on the warm up. I'm using this massive solder, I might actually change the other stuff. This also has some rather nicely flux in it actually. I'll, I'll change the nicer one. Let's do the end pins, make sure they're bedded down. I suppose I'm in the way, of course I am. In there. Still the corners. That way, you know, it's definitely flat on the board, not going to lift up. Okay, move it the first corner, make sure it's heavily down. Push it slightly more actually. There we go. Right, let's get this soldered in. Now I tend to put a fair amount of solder on. Some people might argue I put on too much, but I tend to like to have a nice strong fillet on there. Because um, at least then you know it's got a bit of strength to it and a bit of reinforcement. I, I tend to be a bit generous with it, I think. I probably do put too much solder on. But um, I don't have any problems with my solder joints, so I guess I can't be doing too badly. Uh, maybe I'm just wasting a bit of solder. Is there any focus? Barely, I suppose. You can kind of see what I'm doing. I should probably put this in like a jig to hold it straight so it doesn't move around on me, but uh, I'm lazy. So I'll make sure that I've got enough heat to get it to go right through the board. Just while I linger on it for quite a little while, you know, quite a long time, I'm lingering on those joints to get it a chance for the heat to go through the board and to flow through to the other side. It's something I tend to do with double-sided boards. Okay. Normally, if it's just doing like a little joint like that, um, you know, I'm probably lingering longer than I need to. I probably could do it, you know, like that sort of speed, but I, I want to make sure it's definitely going right through. And if I did a fast one. That's probably a fast one like that. That's a fast one. But I prefer to have a bit more heat and a bit more lingering because if you watch, you can actually see the solder disappear, which means it's still flying through to the other side of the board. I don't really even see that on camera though. Now this has been redesigned a fair bit for my original version. I've added some features and things like that, so I actually really need to rewrite code for it as well. So the original code won't work, I need to make some changes to that. So there's that end. I can now take this module out. 
you can't take it out before you solder the pins in otherwise you can actually pull a pin right out something to watch out for okay so that's that module in I'm not, so I'm not going to put those extra headers in there those extra rows there for future proofing only I may never even use them now the SD card I know I do need to put a header in that because I do want to have that coming out um, which one should I use for that? That give me five. I don't know, only give me four pins because I must cut it off. If I cut that off, that wastes one pin. I'll try and do as efficiently as I can without wasting pins, but yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain. Alright, solder this header in over here. Oh, my solder's unwinding. Okay. So one pin in there first. I've already put flux on. Well, at least on the ball, I haven't put on the actual header itself. That looks straight. Good, the other end. Right, let's run it down. Let's do it again. Okay, that's that header. Now I've got to do this header here, and that one there. Then we'll move on from there. Right, so I've got this header here on. I didn't want to bother recording that. You don't really need to see me solder every single header on, there. So I'm just installing the active buzzer. Which you can see there. Barely, if it focuses on it. Um, now, I think the manufacturing quality of these buzzers is a bit variable. The pin spacing, I know, was definitely 6.5mm. And this one is a bit tight. So I think it's to do with the way they've gotten potted, they're bent outwards very slightly or something. Anyway, it has gone down, but it's not perfect. It's not quite the way it should have been, but that's okay. Yep, it's on. Let's trim these leads off. Right, so that's the active buzz running. See, I've got these other headers on there now. I've got this male header, all the other female headers on there. So it's coming along. Now I just need to find the socket which goes in here. Now there's a, so optional features on here. There's a header here, 3.3 volt header. I probably don't need it, so I'm not, I'm not going to populate the things I think I probably don't need. If I need to add them in, I can just pull it apart and add them. It's not a big deal. I can just add them in. So um, I'm not too worried about that right now. I do need a resistor array goes in here. I think I'll find that. Okay, so this is one of these seal resistor arrays. I've got loads of these things, I bought them years ago. This is a 10k resistor in this case. So I'm going to drop that in there. I did order some different ones, but they haven't arrived yet actually. I ordered some 47s I think it was, yeah 47k. So, they haven't arrived yet, because they haven't arrived I'm just going to use the 10k for now. The larger resistance would just mean lower currents, it just, you know, less current draw when it's doing stuff on the inputs and outputs because this is across these and these are being used for a matrix keyboard so sometimes pins are high and low being controlled by the actual microcontroller so this is a pull up resistor it may or may not matter but um, it could affect things so I'm gonna I, I do want to have a larger resistance value but I don't have any they haven't arrived yet so 10k will have to be what it's using Right, solder this in. I've got one pin soldered already just to get it located. I'm pretty sure it's all right around. Yeah, I, I'm pretty confident I've got the put. Yeah, I've got it right around. I, yeah. So it's just a shame what the uh, ones I actually want to put in haven't arrived yet. All of them a month ago. But, uh, yeah, no good yet. So, oh well. Because of the Chinese New Year and the issues over there, it's delayed things a little bit. That's fine. This is prototype. I might have to change it later on, take it back out and change it. It's not a big deal. Okay, get in there. So, I've positioned the socket in there, and although the footprint is bigger, it's still a bit tight. It's not wonderful. I mean, it has gone on. It's nowhere near as bad as the other footprint was, but uh, it's still not perfect. So it's a bit of a pain. Um, and I've still got the issue really of getting these plugs in. 
I, it will kind of go in if I sort of bend that around a little bit like that. See, it will go in, and I'm get you know, so it will work. The um, right angle socket, which is what these have on the other end, that will also go in if I do it that way. Only just, so it'll just pop in. So, yeah, it's barely acceptable. That way round means that the connector will come straight out of the back of the box, and I don't actually want that to happen. So, um, yeah, I, if you're trying to get this connector in a way which I was happy with, yeah, I'm still happy with it. But it works. Um, you know, this way will work. I mean, these cables aren't likely to get changed very often, but they will get changed from time to time. They will break. So I do need to be able to do it. And it will just, just squeeze in there. If I can find some which is slightly shorter, maybe it will be all right. You know, that, that bit there is a little bit long. Um, and also, don't forget, this is also not soldered in right now. So I, might not, I think when I solder this, I'm going to actually try and angle it a little bit like this, stand it off very slightly, just to make it a little bit easier to get things in and out, because that will make it a lot better, I think. Like that will basically slop, slop in then. So I think that'd be a better idea if I angle it a little bit. Um, yeah, trying to get this done in a nice way has been a real pain. Maybe what I should have done is sort of rotate it around 45 degrees so it come down through here or something. Maybe I could have done that. So it looped like that. Maybe that would have been doable. Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's been a bit of a tight squeeze. It's, this connector's a bit of a pain, basically. You know, what I do with it, it's always wrong. <laughs> so, I mean, I could have maybe shoved it over here like this in the bottom of the board. But then I didn't quite know what I was going to do with the inside spacing either. So and I had this gap over here, so I was like, shove it in there. Well, maybe, maybe if I ever do a revision, I'll do it like that. Maybe that will work. You know, that angle maybe if I should have done like that, that would work quite nice actually. So if I do a revision, I'll change it and probably move it down here like this. That'd be better. But um, yeah, I just like things to be square and straight, and wonky things to start to with. Well, it's soldered on. Let's see if I can plug a plug it in. That's obviously angled slightly. Yep, cool, that works. I'm happy with that. That will also run through there quite nicely. And I can then route it where I need to go, which is likely to be out the side of the box anyway, so that probably goes straight out. Although I could get like that with it. I, I don't know, I figured that out. Of course, if I ever want to put a header in there, then I'm going to have to get like that instead, but that's not a problem. It'll work. I just noticed that I missed the resistor. Can you see it? How about now? How about now? R4. It ain't there. Let's put this in. So I've got a resistor out. Got some flux on there already, as you can probably see. Let's get a resistor in. Just fluff off the tweezers. Give a blob of solder on that side, just get rid of that. Hold up. Okay. Now, fortunately, another thing that hasn't arrived yet are the two buttons that go here. I don't have them yet, these little momentary tactile buttons. Okay. And part of the problem is I don't know how long the shaft has to be because once I actually get the display on here and figure out the spacing of the packing on the back there, plus the display thickness, plus the perspex thickness for the screen cover, which obviously goes in here. Then, um, based on all that, I have to know how long the shafts have to be for these buttons. Now, I've purchased a couple of different kits, well, assortments, I should say, of momentary buttons, so different length shafts. So, um, I don't know if I've got the right ones yet, and they haven't arrived anyway. So, because the first lot haven't arrived after sort of three weeks, I ordered some more. <laughs> so, we'll see what comes. I also ordered some individual ones which are longer. Um, I think the longest in the kit is 13 mil. I'm not sure 13 is long enough. I think I need 15. It might even be longer than that. 
Um, that's my estimates at least. Right, so I think 13 is going to be too short. It might be enough to be just uh, just proud of the face of the front panel. But I want to put a button on it as well, actual, like a cap, button cap. So yeah, so they need to be longer. I ordered some, I think 22s as well, I think it was. 18s, 22s. Because if I need to, I can always cut them down shorter. That works too. So you can see I've got these electrolytic caps in here. They're ready to go. Now, I said before 33 microfarad for each of these. But I do actually have some larger ones which will fit. So I've got a um, 100 microfarad here. That's a 25 volt. So I've substituted that one. I've got a 47 over here. So I'll put that in there. This is going to need a bit less, but... I wanted to put a bigger cap at this end because this is where the um, wireless module is, like the actual lower uh, module. So I trying to keep better smoothing in this area here just to help it a little bit more. So when it gets a big power surge in the lower trying to communicate, it'll um, help to buffer it a little bit with, you know, with that capacitor there. Um, because stuff you get now, I'm using this different module, not obviously in 705, but the little switch mode power supply which can't handle as much current as the one I was going to use so I'm a bit more mindful about current usage and you know what the currents are going to be drawing now this particular module it draws about 100 milliamps or so so it's not too bad but you combine that with an ESP32 which is running potentially running Wi-Fi at the same time your current limits getting pretty close to what the little regulator can do because it's rated at 1 amp so it's pushing it so yeah that's why I've got these capacitors on it, just to help to deal with any um, current spikes to try and help it a little bit because these things put out impulses so it should help to absorb a little bit of that and smooth it out take a bit of stress of it, it'll probably be okay I mean the voltage will sag but it should be alright this module can handle voltage drops a little bit at least so, yeah, you know it's 5 volts going in so it can sag a bit and it shouldn't affect the ESP32 at all it might affect the Wi-Fi module, well the wireless module a little bit and um, yeah, I'm waffling a bit aren't I? Anyway, so it's getting close to being finished but I've got a few issues so I don't have those buttons, I still haven't arrived this is the following day I'm recording this now yeah so i also got to figure out what I'm going to do about the display, I've also got the solid is on yet I haven't done that yet I'm getting the board a little bit of a clean but not a thorough one yet just a quick rinse off it's almost there solid is on Hopefully. Too much solder on that one, that's a bit ugly. Yeah, love it. So I'm trying to record at the same time, so not at the best angles. Right, here we go, let's try some. Go on, slow down. And then the last one. Come on. Right, that's those in at least. Yeah. This has taken a while to build this thing. Longer than I wanted to take, but. Oh, thankfully I don't have to build too many of them. Okay, I changed my mind about how I'm doing, doing some of these things. So let's just get the board and I'll show you what I did. So I changed these two headers here to be these plug-in type instead. Now I'm going to use longer wires to go to the modules instead. Um, that's the SD card I've got plugged in and that's the LoRa module. The reason I've done that is just to make the hardware mounting and everything a bit easier. I was hoping I'd get the LoRa module to fit plugging into this board here and sticking up to the back of the case. Well, I was hoping I'd put a hole in the back of the case here and have that line up and be able to stick it through, but um, apparently not. So you can see I've got a little bit more done. I'll just put these electrolytic caps in there. Electrolytic caps in there. Oh, 